First of all, we need to study about definition of a cyst. So basically, what is a cyst? According to Grammar in the year 1974, cyst is defined as a pathological cavity having fluid, semi-fluid or gaseous contents which is not created by accumulation of pus which may or may not be lined by epithelium. If it is lined by epithelium, then it is called as true cyst. If it is not lined by epithelium, then it is called as pseudocyst or false cyst. So today we are going to study about pseudocyst of the oral cavity which includes traumatic bone cyst, aneurysmal bone cyst and Staphne's bone cyst. Traumatic bone cyst has multiple names. This is also called as hemorrhagic bone cyst, symbol bone cyst, extravasation cyst, progressive bone cavity, idiopathic bone cavity, solitary bone cyst, unicameral cyst. This cyst is not a true cyst because it has no epithelial lining. The pathogenesis of traumatic bone cyst is still not well understood. The most frequently discussed etiological factor in the formation of a traumatic bone cyst is trauma. According to Palmer, trauma leads to introsious hematoma formation. The blood clot liquefies and adjacent bone is destroyed by enzymatic activity. Now this traumatic bone cyst can also occur because of localized aberration in normal bone metabolism or bone remodeling and these bone cavities often occur inside the lesions of cementoosseous dysplasia or fibrous dysplasia. While discussing about Clinical features, this cyst is most commonly seen during second decade of life and this is slightly more common in males and this cyst is generally asymptomatic in nature. Hence, it is discovered during routine dental examination as an incidental finding. The patient may experience pain and tenderness in case of secondary infection. And this cyst can also produce expansion of the mandible, tooth sensitivity, paresthesia and delayed eruption of permanent teeth. The most commonest site to be affected by traumatic bone cyst is mandibular body. That is the region between canine and molar area which is followed by symphysis region which is followed by ramus condyle and maxillary anterior region. And this traumatic bone cyst gives straw colored or bright blood or serosanguinous fluid on aspiration. Serosanguinous fluid which contains small quantity of blood along with clear yellow fluid that is nothing but serum. Now let's study about radiographic features of traumatic bone cyst. A traumatic bone cyst shows well-defined periphery. Sometimes the periphery may be ill-defined. The lesion is oval in shape and it often scallops between the roots of the teeth. Internal structure is completely radiolucent. Sometimes multilocular internal structure is also evident whenever there is pronounced scalloping of endosteal surface. Ridges of bone produced by scalloping gives the appearance of septa. So that gives multilocular appearance to the lesion. This cyst may also produce certain effects on surrounding structures which includes tooth displacement, tooth resorption, the lamina dura of the tooth may be intact or partially disrupted. And the important characteristic feature of this traumatic bone cyst is sparing of cortical boundary of the crypt around the developing tooth. And these lesions have a propensity to grow along the long axis of bone causing minimal expansion. So all these are radiographic features of traumatic bone cyst. Literature review reveals that some cases of traumatic bone cyst undergo spontaneous resolution. The most preferred and widely recommended treatment modality is surgical exploration followed by curettage of the bony walls. It is believed that curettage and surgical exploration will induce bleeding. 
the induced bleeding will form a clot which will ultimately replaced by healthy bone recurrences are very rare with traumatic bone cyst so this is all about traumatic bone cyst next is aneurysmal bone cyst so this cyst is considered to be a reactive lesion rather than a true neoplasm or cyst localized proliferative response of vascular tissue gives rise to aneurysmal bone cyst and this cyst can occur occasionally in association with foxi f stands for fibrous dysplasia o stands for osteosarcoma g stands for giant cell granuloma c stands for central hemangioma and etiology of aneurysmal bone cyst is still not well understood same like traumatic bone cyst aneurysmal bone cyst is also mostly noted during second decade of life and this cyst is mostly seen in females when compared to males mandible is most commonly affected by the cyst when compared to maxilla molar regions of maxilla and mandible are most commonly affected by this aneurysmal bone cyst extensive lesions may involve angle of the mandible and ascending ramus of the mandible rare sites includes zygomatic process of the maxilla coronoid process of the mandible and floor of the orbit clinically we may notice a tender firm rapidly enlarging bony swelling which produces thinning as well as perforation of the underlying cortical plate large lesions can cause displacement of the associated teeth associated teeth are vital when the cyst involves the capsule of temporomandibular joint the patient may complain of difficulty in mouth opening this aneurysmal bone cyst is usually circular or hydraulic in shape according to dabs or buraksiuski wilner this aneurysmal bone cyst evolves through four radiographic phases that is lash l stands for lytic phase a stands for activation phase s stands for stabilization phase h stands for healing phase lytic phase is characterized by well defined area of bone resorption so we can see a well defined unilocular radiolucent lesion active phase is characterized by balloon out or blow out expansion of the periosteum stabilization phase is characterized by multilocular radiolucent lesion with internal ill defined wispy septa as well as trabeculations giving honeycomb or soapable pattern and this healing phase is characterized by progressive ossification of the cyst which gives rise to dense bony mass of irregular structure on aspiration this aneurysmal bone cyst gives blood and this cyst can be managed by surgical curettage or partial resection recurrence rate is fairly high with this aneurysmal bone cyst next is staphney's bone cyst this is also known as static bone cyst or defect of the mandible or lingual mandibular bone cavity or it is also known as latent bone cyst so this particular entity was recognized by staphney in the year 1942 it is the developmental inclusion of submandibular glandular tissue within the lingual surface of the body of the mandible so radiographically we can appreciate an ovoid radiolucency which be in the inferior alveolar canal and inferior border of the mandible whereas traumatic bone cyst lies superior to inferior alveolar canal and the anterior variant of the staphney's bone cyst is found between incisors and premolars rarely neoplasm like mucoepidermoid carcinoma can arise from this staphney's bone cyst Thank you.